Story time. Well, when I was 19 years old, I was hit by a car. I was in my car turning left and an elderly driver was going very fast in a 35 zone, he was going around 60, hit my car and I got smacked around and it was very traumatic. And uh, towards the maybe two or three weeks in, they had done x-rays, they did all kinds of stuff already. They were like, we're not sure what's wrong with you. Something's wrong with your back. We're not, we're not totally sure, but I couldn't really move very well. And I wasn't, it wasn't broken, thank God. But I had two discs that were out of place and then they became deteriorating. They became kind of fractured. And so I kept going to the doctor. Well, during that time, I moved to Kansas City. Yeah, I moved in the middle of a back injury. And when I got there, it was just, it got worse and worse. And I kept going to the doctor. At the time, I was on my dad's military medical insurance. Not super fun. Uh, military doctors aren't always the most fun to deal with. And, and so the doctor told me, well, I'm going to give you two options. We can put metal rods in your back and restructure your disc area with two metal rods. Or you're going to be in a wheelchair and probably not be able to walk. You won't be able to walk short distances by using walkers and wheelchairs the rest of your life. And I was 19, you guys. And I remember at that time just going, how can I be 19 years old, face, pretty athletic at the time, facing the fact that I won't be able to walk normal, that I was going to be crippled? And I know a lot of people face that. And I'm sorry if you face that. But it just didn't feel like my story. It didn't feel like my reality. And I'm sure a lot of people felt it in shutdown, but I didn't feel it because of my own pride or ego. I felt it because God had already given me promises that I was going to nations and countries where there was no handicap ramps, like war zones and places of extreme poverty, places of extreme missions, which I did. I did because I was healed, thank God. But man, it took a process. I remember just standing on the fact of saying, God, you have to, in your heart, obviously want me healed more than I want to be healed because you're the one who gave me all these words about going to nations and places that there's no, there's no handicap ramp. When you get into customs in certain African countries, there's there's no way to get in and go to places that I'm called to go to without you coming through on this one. So I went to um, the place where they pray for people for healing. It was part of a church. And so I just would go, give prayer and got a lot of bad prayer, meaning people, good intentions, but prayed, tried to find all the reasons why I was injured, not just looking at it as a normal injury, super spiritualizing it or over spiritualizing it. But I just wanted to get prayer because I was like, God, I think you're going to heal me. I think I, I don't think this is your will for my life. I don't believe you dreamed of me with a back injury that was going to lead me to being crippled at the age of 19 before time began. I don't believe that was my story. And I see my story. I see what you put inside of me, the ambition for your kingdom that you put inside of me. So I kept praying and just praying, going to places of prayer, getting prayer. And at one point I gave up. And I remember this young guy came over to my house. And I'd been training on people how to hear God's voice in the midst of this in a small group and this young guy came to my house and 19 years old, he was about 27. And he said, he knocked on my door and, and I opened the door and he was the, the hard to receive guy, the guy who never hears from God. You've, you've given this, you know, like all this attention and he, it just wasn't working for him. He was so frustrated. And so he comes to my house and I opened the door and I'm like, oh, hey. And he goes, I heard from God. And he's shaking, just trembling in his hands. I'm like, what? I was so excited for him. Like the guy who never hears from God is hearing from God, yes. And I said, what did you hear? And he goes, God is saying, because you stopped getting prayer. Because at this point, I'm so discouraged that people are praying. They're praying, you know, breaking up masonry and breaking up generational ties and demonic warfare and all the Pentecostal things, all the things. So I was just tired of getting prayer from just from people who would just say, God, heal them. And just, I was waiting for God's results. And I was, I've been prayed for so many times. And so because you're not getting pray, prayed for, the body heals the body. Just like if your ankles hurt, it's like the whole body's system together heals that ankle. It's not the ankle that heals the ankle. And he goes into God's physical, his, his body on the earth is his church. And he wants to use people to lay hands and pray for other people and for healing. It doesn't mean he can't heal you on your own, but he wants to use the body. It's part of his design. And you stop getting prayer. And the Lord told me it's because of pride. And he wants to, he wants you to repent and go back and get prayer. And I was like, oh my gosh. And at first I was a little offended at what he was saying. I was like, but he didn't know. I hadn't told him when I was going to not go back to the prayer room and get prayer. So I was like, okay, I better listen to this. I repented. I said, God. I'm so sorry for judging people who have great hearts who want to pray for me for healing. And I'll go back. I'll go back as many times as it takes because I know I see myself not like this, where I can't move. I can't walk. I can't sleep. I can't, you know, all the things. I went back the next day, you guys, when the prayer room opened, got prayer. Long story, but this man came because we were praying for a famous uh, Christian pastor who had cancer. So we did a prayer meeting for him. And he said, it's a sign that God wants to heal him and extend his life. There's someone here who has a back injury. And he began to describe the car accident and he had a word of knowledge about the back injury I had to the details of like the slip disc, which ones they were and the whole thing. 
And uh, and I sat there and I looked around the room like, who is this person? And no one else was claiming it because I was so excited that someone else was going to be healed. I was like, that's like me. It was me. But I didn't know because I was that's how numb I was because I've been prayed for so many times that I didn't expect it anymore. I didn't expect the healing. And everyone's looking at me because they prayed for me. <laughs> they knew it was me. And so I was like, me, me. And I, I could barely get up because of my back. So I got up, walked forward, and he prayed for me. And I was instantaneously healed. I went back and got an interview or uh, x-ray interview, an x-ray. And uh, the, the doctor, the medical doctor didn't believe me. The, the, uh, he's like, I don't know why we're doing this, Sean. I think a lot of people think God heals them and God doesn't heal them. And, and that military doctor, there's some good military doctors, but that one, he was just such a naysayer all the time. And so he did the x-rays and he goes, I can't believe this. I, and he goes, it was a miracle, right? And he goes, I don't want to call it a miracle yet. I don't want to give you false hope, but it does look different. And he had other people coming to look at it and they're like, uh, this is definitely not the same person. And he goes, this is him. And they're like, no, that can't be him. This doesn't correct like that. This is a miracle. And he's like, well, don't go there yet. You guys, it was a miracle. And so I just want to tell you the story because some of you are struggling with something and you're, and you're hoping, you're believing for God to do something that maybe hasn't happened yet in your body, or maybe you're praying for someone that you love so much and get the purpose, get the vision of God behind it and really go for it. And even if it takes a hundred times of prayer and repent when you don't want to get prayer for healing anymore, tell God, you know, like tell, if you be honest too and say, man, what people are praying sometimes is frustrating because that's not even an alignment with why I'm sick or why I have a disease or why I have this problem or why I have dis dis that are slipped. But be honest with God and be honest with yourself, but keep getting prayer. So I just thought I'd tell you that.